All right, we're good to go. Kayla McKeown, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. How's, how about yourself? I'm good, I'm good. I'm out here in Delaware at nighttime. You're, where are you? Oh, on the Gold Coast, um, Australia. Couldn't ask much more. You couldn't, actually. I'd love to be there right now. Beautiful I place. Mean, weather's not great at the moment. We've had a bit of rain the past few weeks, so love to see the sunshine. I've seen some flooding and stuff like that. Have you guys been affected by any of that? Uh, Gold Coast hasn't, but about an hour north has been really affected. So it's pretty devastating, but I think it'll hopefully get cleared up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, listen, uh, I'm first time meeting you, really. First time talking to you. So it's my first time to be able to congratulate you on all the success you've had. You've uh, you've done fantastic in the last couple of years. Yeah, thank you. It's been a, you know, a huge, huge past year, you know, 20 2020 to 2021 is definitely some years I won't forget, you know, COVID thrown in there, but it's been awesome. It's been an awesome experience and I really hope I can do it for the next Olympic cycle as well. Now, just uh, touching on recent success, you were down in Melbourne competing at the uh, Vic um, Champs and swam super fast down there. Was that expected? It kind of felt like it came unexpectedly. Oh, 100%. You know, I haven't been able to train all that much at the moment. You know, I've only just started stepping up to 4k swim and then 2k off the back of that kicking so my shoulder injury is still preventing me to, from doing my total volumes as I would have normally um in this time of the year but you know I'm still putting in the hard work and to go down to Melbourne and you know touch the wall in the 200 backstroke especially in C204 I wasn't expecting that at all um you know I thought maybe it could have been like a 206 207 so mm. I was pretty happy and over the moon yeah, two of two of four is absolutely flying and uh, not far off the world record. So, um, do you usually swim fast in season, or is this one kind of um, just random? Yeah, I think you know, looking from my past results as well, I'm quite consistent throughout the year. Taper, unfortunately, doesn't do a whole lot for me. Um, mm. I wish it did. Maybe I just haven't found the right recipe for it yet. But something I you know have another three years to work towards. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the. Um, injury and I, and I saw that you know you hurt yourself in cans right before the olympics yeah. what were you actually doing um yeah so a few people have laughed at me but i was in gym and i had um reverse dumbbells um behind my head while i was laying on a bench and my shoulder popped out in this position here and i didn't mm. realize i was trying to lift the weight up and you know doing that obviously did quite a bit of damage tearing my labrum um and i I, you know, swam three Olympics about two weeks after um, we got out of quarantine, which is, you know, a month later after the Olympics, I decided to go get a scan because it just, you know, the pain wasn't going away. And sure enough, um, have an injury now. Wow. Is, is it something that, I mean, how do you heal something like that without surgery? Yeah. So, you know, I have a lot of experts around me and the best advice I got given was to avoid surgery. Just backstroke is a very technical stroke and, with the surgery, I wouldn't have been able to get into those positions I would have normally. So that was off the cards. And it's been a lot of gym and rehab, trying to get all the ligaments and strength back around it to hold it in the right position. Uh, and it, that's still a process and it's going to be a process for the rest of my career. Listen, I've known a couple of backstrokers in my time uh, as, a, as a swimmer and as a coach. And to be the fastest in history out of all the backstrokers that I've ever known is, is pretty freaky. I mean, what, what do you think it is about you that makes you special? And, I, and I'll say this, when you just put your arm over your head like that, I was like, oh, damn, she can, she's flexible. Like, you're super flexible, right? Yeah, um, I'm very hypermobile. Like, my elbows just bend and, you know, do all sorts of things. It's something that I've learned to, you know, use to my advantage. And there's a lot of girls that also I race have this, I don't know, secret little talent, I guess. But, yeah, I... I do start my catch behind my Damn. head. You know, it is wow. overreaching, but um, it's something that I've worked on and it's worked for me now. T tell me about that while we're on it. T talk to me about the backstroke catch. I mean, there's a lot of people listening to this, a lot of coaches. How do you explain the backstroke catch and and kind of just talk me through what, what you're doing in that moment? Um, I've never been asked this question before. It's a bit, a bit different. I don't really know how, but... <laughs> I guess um, for me, the start of my stroke, I, I ensure like my um, pinky, like mm -hmm. I'm waving to the outside, um, mm -hmm. all the fans in the crowd, you know. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I hit the water, lock on straight away. I mean, you can't really see the top of my catch, but 
this is the most important for me. I'm not very strong through this range. So I've really got to lock on here and use the momentum to push down. And then, you know, thumb to thigh is one of my cues that I use throughout training to try finish off my stroke. Thumb to thigh. Okay. That's interesting. All right. Let, let's, let's go back to this part then. So you, you say you even um, overreach. Are you thinking about your hip as, as you're coming around? Um, I mean, backstroke is a, is a stroke that's hard to nail and I'm still, you know, finding the rhythm. Uh, hard to nail? You're the world record holder. What are you talking about? I know. You, you nailed um, it. <laughs> it. It makes it exciting because I know there's certain things I can still tweak. Um, yeah. But, you know, I do struggle with my rotation, you know, um, sitting on the physio table, they're like, how do you swim fast? Your, your rotation's shocking. Mm. Um, but, you know, again, like I can get extra range from my hips. So I guess it's just tailored to my body and my flexibility. Mm, right yeah absolutely but you're you are saying that when your hand is up here in this top position you're trying to get onto the water straight away like you're holding and catching yeah. water immediately right yeah i mean i've watched a lot of athletes and you know i've done a few swim clinics with my sister as well and you notice the younger guys they don't quite have the strength here yet so they mm -hmm. they're waiting to start their stroke here whether they they could gain an extra you know millisecond by starting it a bit closer are you are you trying to press down on the water in that catch, or are you are you turning your hand out to hold water? You know, turning you know it saying? out to hold water. So okay, right. Straight in, bang, bang. bang okay. Through. Now, as you as you pull through, are your fingertips towards the side of the pool, or are you are you pressing down here at, at the it's top? It's kind end? of like uh, a bit of a V. So right. yeah, my fingertips, my pinky is always facing down. So right. through the okay. water, it's facing down, and then. All the way. You are super flexible. I can just see it every time you do it. I'm like, damn, she gets in this like crazy catch. But it's like, <laughs> but, it's, but you've got flexibility. So you're catching onto the water, you're holding it. And then you talked about something about um, um, pinky to, what was it? Or thumb to, thumb thumb to, to thigh. thigh. Thumb yeah, to thigh. So when do you start thinking that? So sometimes I'll quite often, you know, come in and, you know, just dip my stroke. Whether if I'm thinking about the thumb to thigh is making sure I'm pushing that water that I've, you know, gain momentum through out the back of my stroke and not pushing it down to the bottom of the pool. Mm, right. Okay. We're just doing a little clinic here. So thanks. <laughs> this, this wasn't planned either. But yeah. I, just like, I like it when I get the best in the world at something, I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick her brain. Um, <laughs> okay. Then talk to me about the, the timing of your stroke in terms of tempo. Like, you know, what are you thinking when you, when you're thinking about your tempo and your races? Ah. Uh, I don't necessarily think about stroke rates or times when I'm racing, funny enough. It's more about the process for me. So, you know, the starts, the kicks off the off the blocks and then the turns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I use training as my time to really knuckle down, down on those stroke rates and right. that swim speed, uh, which right. is something that obviously hasn't come easily. It's you've got to block out everything when you get to a race and just really nail those one percenters and that's, what I believe got me across the line at the Olympics, um, just having full faith in my training and what I've done. But so you I mean know, almost like turning your brain off at that point in time? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, okay. more so, my body physically knows what it has to do. Right. It's just mentally, I've got to put myself in that situation now. And mentally, when I'm saying that, I mean take myself back to training and know what I've done and the work that I've done. Right, and but not but but behind the blocks at the Olympics, you're not thinking, all right, I gotta go twenty seven strokes down and I gotta be no. at this tempo and you're not you're not thinking that. You're just not at all. I could honestly um pull up, wait for the, the starter and as soon as I'm in, I'm like thirteen kicks. This is for the hundred I'm talking about, thirteen kicks um should bring me up just before the fifteen. Mm -hmm. Um easy speed down, feet on the wall fast, and twelve kicks off that wall, uh, mm -hmm. eleven to twelve. And then just steam steam train home. What does steam train home mean to you? Well, actually, no, let's go back. What, what does easy speed mean to you? Um, easy speed is just not having to put a lot of effort in for the time. So, you know, holding that stroke and making sure every stroke, you're getting every bit of water that you can, um, especially in the 200. You know, if you're spinning the wheels, you know, high stroke rate, you're not going to be out of back end uh, the last 150. So it's really important to hold that water and hold that connection through that first 50. And obviously the second 50 and the hundred, you just got to bring it home. 
We individualize training in the pool, so why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Biney of Biney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. I looked at your splits here from this 204 that you just laid out. You went, you went out in 29.7, second 50 was 32.1. Then the third 50 was 31.8, and then the last 50 was 30.9. So obviously you're, you're building, it looks like, those, those three 50s off the first 50. And I just, in terms of the 29, do you, do you know what 29 feels like? Can you, can you nail like 29.7 on the dot? Um, not on the dot, but in training, I am quite consistent. You know, if we have turn of pace, I'm on that 31.5, 31.5, and I know Right. how it feels sometimes my stroke rates vary you know some days i'll rock up and i'm not holding as much water so my stroke rate might sit around 43 instead of 39 40s mm. right okay so when you say 31 what did you say 31 3 31 5 31 5 so uh, is that from feet leaving to hand touch yeah okay yeah. so that's just kind of drilled into you you know what like as soon as coach says go you know what 31 5 feels like you could sit on that and practice yeah. pretty comfortably yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Talk to me about a set that you would do that would mimic the the two hundred backstroke specifically. What what kind of work do you do for that? Like, give me an example. Uh, with my former coach, I do remember doing this set vividly. It was actually supposed to be thirty seven fifties, three on forty five, and then one on sixty. Um. And anyways, it didn't work out to be thirty seven. We ended up doing fifty fifties because someone wiped on the boards. Anyways, long story short. <laughs> Um, you know, I was very consistent. I think my fastest was a 29.9 and that was the first one. And then as soon as I got settled, um, you know, I was at 31.5 consistently for the whole set. And actually one of the girls turned to me, she's like, are you a robot? And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to do what I'm told to do. Um, <laughs> what'd you say those were on? So there was three on 45 and then we had the fourth one was on 60 and that was recovery. Oh, okay. And and do you usually just um, swim easy freestyle or do you flop backstroke? Um, I do. I mean, it varies. And that I was swimming freestyle so I could get to the other end and kind of shake out my legs a little right. bit before right. doing the next three. But, you know, for example, last night, my new coach, Michael Bowl, he had mm. us doing 425s walk back, 450s best average, and then 100 push max um, twice through. And that... I would say is more middle distance. So 200 work. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just very different. Um, I'm still getting a feel for, you know, Chris Mooney versus Michael Bowl, and they're really good in their own ways. I want to get into that, you know, uh, what, what you're experiencing now on, under Bowl and, and maybe yeah. what, what you were comfortable with before. But uh, I want to go back to one thing that you said, you, you talked about that second 50 in the hundred. You said something specific there. What was it? Steam train. Yeah, steam train home. Okay. What, yeah. what do you mean by that? So like when you're saying steam train home, what what are you actually doing? Um, I mean, just everything you got. There's only 150 to go. So for me at the Olympics and, you know, any meet I really race at, it's that feet speed onto the wall. And as soon as I'm coming off, it's bang, 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 12 kicks to the surface and then just holding as much water as I can and coming home as fast as I can. So you're not um, – you're not – you know, you said easy speed, so you want it to feel smooth, but, and then you, you're connecting those kicks, but you're not coming up and just rating like a, a crazy no. woman. Like you're actually no. trying to hold water off that turn too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I know at the Olympics, um, the first 25, you know, my stroke rate was 15, then it dropped to 47 and about the whole race up until the last 15, when, you know, you're, you're fatigued, it dropped to 45. So mm. I've trained to be able to hold a certain stroke rate for that long. Mm. um it's just you know obviously as you get fatigued you're not holding as much water right are you do you use a tempo training uh, trainer no, no. <laughs> they they tried to get me to use and i just couldn't handle the beeping it it really actually threw me off so <laughs> i don't know for me to learn something i've just got to be able to do it myself and 
figure out the way that my body needs to, I don't know, react to get me to do it that way. Do you use cues on the way down to help you stay in that easy speed and then um, hammer home? Like, uh, is there words in your head? A hundred percent. You know, like that, I say to myself, easy speed, first 50, connect, hold water. And, and you just repeat that, that? I don't repeat it. You know, honestly, when I'm racing, I, I don't think about much. Mm -hmm, okay. It's just, yeah, like I said, in training, that's where all my thought and process goes into. And when I stand behind the blocks, I should feel confident in myself that I know what I'm about to get in and do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about mentally figuring out when to pull the trigger to get going. Right. Is, uh, I mean, it's very common, by the way. The, it's the yeah. best swimmers in the world, I've, I've interviewed a lot of them, and it's very common for the best swimmers in the world to just go into automatic and kind of turn off and go into a free space where they allow the performance to happen. They don't force the performance. They don't overthink it. I mean, it seems like you've got a gift in that sense that you, you, you've tapped into something pretty early. Is this something that you, you feel like you've always had or have you had to develop that over time? Oh, you definitely develop it over time. You know, I've had a few coaches. Um, John Wallace, probably my age group coach, he drilled it into me. Mm -hmm. um, I was quite off with the ferries and training sessions. He'd be like, Kaylee, come on, don't switch into autopilot. Um, mm. I need you to be consistent in training and think about what you're doing. And then when you get to racing, that's when, you know, your body knows what it's about to do and it can switch off into that autopilot mode and you've just got to mentally wrap your head around what you're doing. Right. Uh, I, I want to stay technical for a second again. I want to talk the backstroke kick. We don't often talk about the backstroke kick. How do you, how do you kick? How do you hold water on your feet? And, and what are you doing in your backstroke kick? Yeah. So I guess I've taught myself to hold a consistent kick. Um, I am quite pigeon toed. So when I'm kicking my feet to mm. quite often hit one another, it's, right. I don't know. It's just the way my body is, I guess. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, I like to think that I can hold my kick for my entire race. And that's what I had trained to do in the past and what I'm still training to do. Um, kick is my, I, I'm shocking at pull. I cannot pull to save myself. So kick is literally all I've got. Mm. Um, and it ends up being the biggest muscle group in your body. So why not work it as much as you can? Right. Are you, are you a, um, you know a kicker in backstroke does it go side to side or are you straight up and down or around and around um, i'm definitely it's not a huge movement side to side um right. you know i've watched mick mick lark uh larkin stroke and he's quite right like, he'll cross his feet over stop for a bit and then right. continue whether i yeah i just constantly and you know little rotations as your mm -hmm. jurassic's moving through the water Right, right. Super interesting. This is this is cool. Did you study any backstrokers growing up? In anyone in particular, or is this just uh, natural for you? Um, I mean, nothing comes naturally. You have obviously natural ability, but to be able to race fast and train hard—that's a different breed in itself. Um, but you know, I did really idolize MC Bomb uh, when mm. I was a young kid. Mm. So being able to race her at the Olympics and race her at other senior meets around the world has been spectacular in itself but even her like her technique is impeccable and i've just you know i i remember being like 14 years old and starting to get my race analysis done and they'd be like this is the best in the world it'd be mc bomb and then mine's like three mm. four seconds um <laughs> later so yeah i think i just look back and it's so cool to think you know looking up to someone really does motivate you and it's gotten me this far. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think is possible in backstroke? Do you do you think fifty six is possible for for women soon? Oh, hundred percent. I think um, Regan really just proved to her. She, I think the record was what fifty eight double O from Kathleen, and then mm. she just got up behind the blocks. Regan did at that world champs and just dropped to fifty seven fives. So it's like you know, <laughs> you don't just drop 0.5 like that. So I have, I have no doubt that um, all the girls that are still racing backstroke want to drop onto that 50, 57. So I honestly wouldn't surprise me if it happens before the next Olympics. Right. Well, what do you think about the Americans? What's your, what's your personal thoughts on them? I think going and seeing them at international meets, they've always come across as intimidating. And I think that's the way that they like to be perceived as well. But I think they just bred tough, you know, from all the 
American meets that they do. It's racing back to back all the time and they just race tough. Yeah. Well, I mean, racing tough. I mean, you are the Olympic champion in the, in the hundred, 200 back. So talk about racing tough, someone that, that gets it. Um, what is it about you that, you know, talk yourself up a little bit. What are some of the qualities that you have that, that you think are pretty amazing? Again, I've never really been asked these questions before. So it's, I know it's I'm, I'm, I'm a much better interviewer than anyone you've ever had. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like to think I quite, I really get down on myself when it, when I have a bad training session and, you know, I'll, I like to be consistent. And when I be mean consistent, I'll, I'll never let myself drop below where I think I can drop below because I know, you know, when you, when you get to the top, it's hard to stay there, but when you're chasing someone, so everyone's chasing me now in that hundred mm. and I've got to try, keep moving forward, push my momentums forward. Um, so in training, I never let that slip my mind either. I know that I've got to consistently be the best trainer I can be because if I slip up one session, that could be the session that costs me in a race. Um, wow. So I like to keep motivated in that way. And then obviously outside training, I'm I'm good at removing myself from the pool and having a good social group around me, you know, friends mm, that I've had right. from school um, and just completely switching off. Right, right. Destro Swim Towers. Gain strength in the water with a tower of power. Save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout destromachines.com. Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout and get 10% off anything from Vasa. Going into the Olympics, did you think um, that you could win both races, like before you did it? Um, I don't know. I I like to have that self-confidence in myself, but at the same time, I do have a lot of self-doubt. And I think that's because I don't want to disappoint myself and then others around me. And that's still something that I'm learning to really deal with, is that it's not got anything to do with anyone else but myself. Um but yeah, I, I had lots of people, even my former coach come up to me. He's like, you know, I reckon we could do the double, even the triple if I did do the 200 IM. And I think knowing having the confidence come from my coach, especially really boosted me up to get behind those blocks and think, you know what, I really could pip these girls. And it was never going to be easy. I mean, we could tell that from the heat swims when there was three Olympic records broken within, I don't know, mm -hmm. eight, 15 minutes within one another. So that was just unbelievable in itself. How do you how do you respond when you see that in front of you? Like it, it's happening, and and you know you're up. Um, what what's your physical response? What's going on in you? Honestly, I was like, oh, right, that that's happened. Now I've got to try <laughs> do that. Um, mm. I was like, we could have maybe saved that for the final, maybe not the heats. <laughs> um, but you know, I I had a race plan going in, and I just wanted to make sure I could execute that the best I could. My coach said to me, he's like, you know. This is nighttime speed. I would like you to, you know, try to be around 58 low or 57 high, but make sure those processes are absolutely nailed. So when you get to the semifinals and the finals, you can relax yourself and calm yourself and know you've done it twice before. Um, yeah, and you've got nothing to lose. What's that process like for you to go from um, heats, semis, finals, and, you know, you always want your best performance in the final. So how do yep. you... How do you maintain putting out what you need to do, but also having something in reserve for the big moment? Yeah, I think when you rock up to Olympic Games, you can't save anything. I mean, mm. in Australia, it's a bit different. There's not as much depth as what there would be in Olympics. So mm. I can, you know, really afford to, you know, go PB plus 10 in a heats and then, you know, go as hard as I can in a final. And right. as bad as that is, um, that's just the way that swimming is in Australia. But, you know, when you go over to those international meets, it's not the case at all and you've really got to step up your game. And that's why the meets within Australia, I've just done events back to back to back. So I've taught my body what it feels like to have pre-fatigue going into those finals and semifinals. Um, but, yeah, when I 
stood behind the block. So I had that confidence in myself that A, my training has been the best it's ever been. And B, I've also done meets before where I'm doing, you know, a turn at IM and then a turn it back within 15 minutes of one another. Yeah. Actually, speaking of the 200 IM, why did you decide not to swim the 2 IM? I, I haven't seen um, any any media. It's probably out there, but I'm just asking you, why did you pull out of the 2 IM? Weren't you number one in the world for that? Yeah, I think I was ranked number one. Um, right. And I don't know. I've just never done medley at any meets apart from my first international, which was in 2017 Worlds, and I did the 400 IM. And that was just a throw-in swim for me, really, just to get some – you know, international racing under my belt so I could, you know, use it as a stepping stone towards the Olympics. Um, but our trials, I swam a really good turn at I am and I I just assumed I wasn't racing it. And it wasn't actually until we got to Cairns, Mooney said, oh, do you want to do a set I am? And I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And he was like, oh, what do you mean? And I was like, no, what do you mean? Um, and he's like, you're racing the turn at I am. And I was like, Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think it wasn't until then that, you know, we actually sat down and had a conversation because it was a, a double up. So I think it was like my 100 backstroke semifinal and my heat swim mm. of the 20 am something like that. There was a crossover right. of some sort. And I didn't feel confident enough in myself that I could back up and do that. And especially in Olympics, it isn't the place to really try that. So that's what I mean for this next three years, I'm going to try add it to my program. Um, whether or not I can do it this year, I'm not sure yet. It's a conversation I've got to have with Bowley and he's, he's kind of pushing it, but I'm just a bit nervous because I, I don't want to be that one hit wonder. I want to be able to step up for these next three years and be on that podium um, and really just push the history books. Right. Right. Yeah. You're not going to be a one hit wonder. You're, you're a brilliant swimmer. I mean, it's incredible how good you are. So I'm, I'm, I'm in awe, but listen, um, do you have regrets about pulling out now? Like looking back and the, and the meat that you had and the golds and you know, all that sort of stuff. Do you like, damn, I, I let one get away. Um, I wouldn't say I regret anything at the Olympics at all. It was a decision that was made and it was made by myself, my coach and our head coach. So I have no regrets in that regard, but I do remember um, either doing a bit of training. I was watching the women's turn at IM final. Mm. I was like, I could have been racing in that. And mm. it like, it made me a bit disappointed in myself, but at the same time, it has made me hungry to want to get up on that podium for that event as well. Right, right. What's your weakness in that event? Is it the breast trunk? Um, butterfly is actually my worst stroke by far. Butterfly, okay. But yeah, um, my back to breast is probably my strongest leg, believe it or not. Mm. And then obviously my free and my fly are quite poor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were number one in the world at the time. I don't think they're poor, but you probably got really, really high standards. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, so then where would you put your emphasis on improvement then? Let me say that. Um, you know, I've already started my back to breaststroke turns i i used to do the really long glide into a wall and then turn around but then now i'm doing the oh crossover crossover mm. i don't know i was always really scared to do it but now bolly's like no if you want to train under me you got to be able to do that so <laughs> um yeah i'm doing that now and it's already made a drastic improvement i raced at new south wales and it was the fastest in out speed i've had mm. even though the overall time was slower it's still those skills again were the best that they've ever been Who's teaching you the crossover? That's a tough one to to get. You have to kind of like see it almost, and then you have to have someone maybe walk you through it a bit. Is there somebody mentoring you through that? Been a long process. I the first time I tried to do it, I honestly just stopped and I didn't know which way to turn my body and pop my mm -hmm. head up. And Bolly was just laughing, <laughs> and I was like, "It's not funny. I'm actually trying." <laughs> um, and it's it's taken me to you know. Fortunately, we have you know Brendan Smith, who is the bronze medalist at the Olympics, mm -hmm. and his techniques and skills are also really great. So I've had him to watch. And then right. there's a few other I am as now group that are good at that term. One of them being my sister. So she took the time out to really show me how to maneuver myself that way. And every, I think Tuesday, Thursday, I get pulled to the side to work on that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. We were talking off camera earlier about your, your sister's a, a phenomenal athlete herself, swimmer, um, Commonwealth champion in, in breaststroke, and you've never really been on an international relay together. We've got to get the sisters, you know, back and breast on the same relay. Do you think that can happen? Oh, I would absolutely love it. I, we did think that maybe Commonwealth Games, that mm. would be our chance, but it never got, we never got given that opportunity. So hopefully you know, maybe this year, even com games, a world chance, we get that opportunity, mm. whether it's a heat swim or a final swim. Yeah, that'd be cool. Come on, Australia, give her a, give her a <laughs> chink, give them a chance. Let's get the sisters on. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the, we've seen the Campbell sisters together. That'd be, that'd be cool. That's um, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long do you have until trials? Good question. Um, our trials were supposed to be in April. Now they've been moved to may oh may they're, in, they're in may now may okay start to the 23rd okay so you got you got a couple of months now i don't know why i was talking off camera you got yeah, a couple I of months now 10 weeks 10, yeah, weeks, 10, yeah. we 10 weeks okay all right so we'll listen swim angelfish swim angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities swim angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. You've made the, the move to Bowley. What are some of the first big changes that you've noticed? I think it's just the accountability. Um, you know, there's a, a huge group of swimmers. I think there's about, oh, I'm going to say around 22 mm. of us. Mm. Um, and it's a really, really big squad and it's a good squad as well. I I wanted to surround myself with people who I knew would push, push me in training, one of them being Emma and, you know, Max there as well. So there's, I think we've got like 10 athletes that have been on teams uh, representing Australia and that's just surreal in itself. So you can... You can imagine the training and the hype um, that gets thrown into that training mix as well. But yeah. I think Bowling in, in himself, he's just had so much experience with past swimmers, you know, Steph Rice being one of them. Mm. So mm. I have full faith in him and he's pulled me to the side and already said, you know, I see a lot of things that we can do to, you know, get get you below that 204 and 208. Right, right. Well, well, tell me what what does Bowley do well? What makes Bowley so great? I mean, we 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 hear about, especially in America. I know Bowley personally, but in America, it's just Michael Ball, and you know. But what makes him great? I think he's very. He looks out for his swimmers. He he notices when something's wrong, and he'll pull you to the side, and you know, either pull you into line or you know, be there to sympathize with you. But through like. He didn't have to deal with me having my injury, but he was really hands-on. He's like, Kaylee, just relax. Like, you know, we've got a few weeks. You don't need to push yourself because we want you to be good in that three years' time. You don't have to be good now. Even to the point where he's like, you know, I'm not going to be mad if we can't do Commonwealth Games or World Champs. He was actually pushing for me to remove myself for that and maybe just do Com Games. Um, mm, really? So, yeah, he's, he's really supportive and... You know, at training, he knows exactly what we have to be doing to get to where we want to be in a race. And that is really good because constantly I would just be pushing myself all the time and not have, you know, a set standard. And, and either way, it works, but it's just an extra process that I've been given now and it makes me feel more comfortable. Right, right. Yeah. Um, there's another guy there, one of my uh, one of my former um, friends and and uh athletes cody simpson how's cody doing cody's actually doing really well i think when he moved back to australia a lot of people were like what is what is he doing mm. um but being able to train with him and see what he does it's actually unbelievable that someone can you know have that many years outside of the pool and then get up to you know olympic trials and perform the way that he did and he is really motivated i'd say he's one of the most motivated if not the most motivated person in our squad he just brings a lot of hype and whether, you know, again, that's the American spirit that he's dropping in. I, I'm not sure, but it, it's good to be around and he's good company for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, he's, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. Let's just say that. And, and he is, he's a hard worker. And that's the thing that people 
may overlook because he's so pretty and he sings well and he, uh, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. It's like this guy works his butt off. He, he does work hard. So I'm sure he's a good addition to the incredible group you have. Do you have um, right now, do you have a training partner? Like who, who would be the person that would be doing a lot of the same work that you're doing? Um, MC Bomb is obviously still in the squad, but she hasn't returned back to the pool yet. We're not sure when she will. Um, so obviously I'm waiting for that, but at the moment, you know, I, I do quite often get up against some of the boys or, you know, I'll be one of the girls doing butterfly. Um, Emma McKean's actually just come back this week. So I'm looking forward to maybe being able to pace myself off her a little bit. Obviously she'll be in front because what, she's a 55 hundred flyer and I'm a 57 backstroker, but hopefully, um, you know, I can get down to those times. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, what is it about Australia's? swimming is and on, on the women's side especially like what what's what's clicking right now why are the why are you guys so good i mean obviously there's a talent factor but there's something going on with the australian women where you guys are world dominant you know it's not just you're not just competitive you're dominating i think we all have the same mentality where we just want to get up and prove to the world that you know we train hard we work hard and we're here to race we're not you know we're not little fluffy clouds in the sky we 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 are mm. tough and i think we just love the hype to be honest i i i look up to emma even still and be like i want to be like her one day and come away with seven olympic medals it's yeah. unbelievable yeah yeah it is freaky i mean she's she's so gifted but i think she has that same talent that we were talking about when when she can just turn her brain off during a race and let her body take just over go. she does the same thing right so yeah, super cool. Um, what was your perceived, I don't know, idea about me before you um, actually got to meet me? Yeah, I guess I'd seen, obviously, the interviews where you dropped the F-bomb. I think everybody's <laughs> seen that, you know. Um, you just seem like a really happy-go-lucky um, kind of person to be around. But there's obviously a toughness. Like, I, I saw a frame of you uh, after you won your race at the Olympics and you can just see it like this grit on your face, like you are super competitive. So how do you switch modes from, you know, the, the happy, likable person to the super competitive person? Like, has that always been in you? Is there something that, you know, you have to draw upon to get that out of you? Um, questions back on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I went backwards. Uh, I don't know. I think, you can't be serious all the time. Yeah, you, you've got to be fun. I I always say a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer. So when I'm in marshalling, I just I chat. At the Olympics in that hundred backstroke final, no one no one wanted to talk. So here I am talking to the officials. Mm. You know, you gotta you gotta figure out what works for you. But I know deep down, I was you know hyping myself up like you know I'm the toughest one here. You know all that all that self talk, and mm. I don't like saying it because. I don't know. It makes me feel arrogant saying in that, but that's the kind of stuff that I have to say to get myself ready to race. Um, I would never say it out loud ever, but you know, it just, it turns that certain side of me to, you know, dig down and be an animal. Um, mm. That's something my old coach used to say. He was like, be an animal. I <laughs> to this day don't really know what it means, but I just think it means get down and work hard. <laughs> Sounds like your old coach had a Dean Boxer influence. Um, oh, I they're do... very good friends. Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah. Um, I do know what I was going to ask you. So, okay. In Australia, a lot of people, a lot of Americans don't know this, or they may know it, but they don't really understand it, is when you win Olympic golds like you won, you become a superstar. I mean, people know you. You, you Your life changes dramatically. You, you get, all of a sudden get a lot of sponsorship too. So, like... What have been some of those major changes that you've noticed where people really didn't know who you were before and now you're kind of a household name? Um, I don't know. I, I don't see it like that. I think uh, for me, especially being a form stroker, we don't get as much recognition as, you know, the freestylers. And I think a lot of people can actually vouch for it. I'm not trying to, you know, down put that, but it's just, the world sees freestyle and doesn't really worry about much else. Mm. Um, it's the swimming world that really gets you hyped up. So there are, you know, quite often when we go to meets, you know, like New South Wales states that just happen or Victoria states, you go down and kids are like, oh, my God, that's Hayley McKeown. 
and it's quite seems like hi guys like I don't bite um in you know the autographs and photos that they ask for as well I've never experienced anything like that um and very rarely you know I'm out in public and someone's like oh can I have a photo but it, it has happened um but again like to get sponsorships like Katie Ledecky and you know Caleb Dressel and Emma and Arnie it's it's nothing like myself or Zach Sobody Cook, for example. Yeah. Really? Is it? Yeah. That's surprising. I, it is a little bit, but, you know, it's just the world, I guess. Do you have management? Yeah, 100%. That, I mean, in saying that I've renegotiated my Speedo contract and mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that. I've been with them since I was 13 years old. So a bit of loyalty there to good old Speedo. And I've recently signed with Amiga as well, which is – Pretty spectacular. I'm pretty excited for that. Very cool. That's nice. Well, listen, I guess, yeah. I guess, like you said, you just got to ultimately keep proving yourself. You've got the drive and the hunger to want to be successful in, in Paris as well. Um, do you, do you, do you have a look at maybe adding a freestyle? If that's, if that's the way you look at it, like, do you feel like you could add a, a hundred or 200 freestyle? Oh, I wish, but you know, the girls in Australia, they, it's insane. The freestyle at the moment, mm. the depth is just, yeah. unbelievable from molly o'callaghan being the youngest olympian on our yeah. team and i think in the whole village maybe or maybe yeah. swimming i don't know she was the youngest at something but yeah. to just look at that and see her drop a junior world record was unbelievable i was i'm not going anywhere near that <laughs> yeah uh, i did read also on the on the internet that you you suffered from asthma growing up i, I suffered from asthma too and i was actually a backstroker early on because I, I was afraid to stick my head in the water um but then but then I, I flipped over and became the freestyler that you dream of being. But um, it was a, so was that part of the backstroke lure for you? Is that were you was were you, was it trouble for you to put your head in the water? Um, it wasn't a trouble, I guess. When you're developing through swimming and going through, you know, the ranks from age group to opens, mm. it's it's I guess the stroke kind of picks you. I know that sounds really stupid, but. You know, I did everything and I did I am breaststroke, butterfly and yeah. backstroke it was just the stroke that fell naturally for me. And it was something that I got pushed to train in. But at the same time, like I love doing medleys and I love going to meets and being able to do, you know, a turn to breaststroke every now and then. Like, yeah. I think it's really important to just have that variety. So you're not doing the same thing over and over, especially in training. Right. What's your favorite event? What's the, what's the one that you're like, that's my baby. That's the one I love the most. Oh, probably the turn it I am, to be honest. Or, really? Mm. Yeah, all the 100 back. I like, it's more so the I am's fun in the sense that, you know, it's a different stroke every 50 and you get to change it up. Mm. Um, and the 100 back is just a quick dash for me. Um, it's not a grueling, you know, 400 I am or turn it back. The turn it back burn in the legs is just, mm. <laughs> yeah. no one likes to talk about it and <laughs> feel that pain, but. It's something you got to do. I mean, to be the best in the world. So even even coming back in thirty seconds in the final fifty of your two hundred back, you're you're feeling that pain. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think, um, especially in that race, I probably that middle hundred was a bit. I don't know. I've never really paced it like that before. Usually, I'm quite consistent, so I'll be like 29, 31, 31, and then a bit slower on the way home. But I think there's been one or two times I've dropped below that thirty one pace on the way home. So, uh, well, how do you get, how do you get better? Like, let's say 202 might be the dream. Are you looking at improving your, um, aerobic capacities? Are you looking at doing more kind of 3,100 type, you know, VO2 max type work? Or it's like, where, where do you make that improvement to find another couple of seconds in the 200? Yeah. Um, I guess that's where Bowley comes in. I, put that to him he, right. he's one of the best coaches in the world and he knows how to get an athlete to where they want to be uh for myself in the water i know that i've got to think of ways that i can make my stroke faster so like i said just holding that bit of extra water whether that's getting more strength in the gym or you know in that 200 already we my kicks off the wall so 13 off the start seven off the first turn and then six and six off the last two turns whether mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to upgrade that now to eventually get to maybe eight. Because, you know, I've looked at Regan and I've seen her race analysis and that girl's on, underwaters are unbelievable and they're fast as well. So I think if I want to be anywhere close to her world record, that's something that I need to do. Yeah. 
Well, listen, good luck with everything. It sounds like you're on track. You've made a really good choice to join, join Bali's group and um, already having success with it. Sounds like the uh, the shoulders healing itself and um, you just seem like you're in a happy place and making some money off Omega now, which is good. <laughs> and um, just keep that rolling. But um, listen, good luck for the trials. Good luck for everything in the next uh, few few months. We'll definitely be watching and I appreciate you doing this. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, take care, Kaylee. All right. See you later. Stay there for one second. Event, heat, lane, name of swimmer, times and places. It's called Swim Nerd Live, and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart TV, phone, or other device. There are so many things you can do with this software. A very simple and easy to use necessity for any team or facility that is live streaming their meets results. One click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time. Go to swimpractice.com to learn more.